Hello, friends. This is Peter Herbeck. I hope you're at peace in Christ. Well, one of the most important things we can do when we're living through a difficult and challenging times is to keep the big picture in mind. Uh, the scripture helps us do that. The Lord helps us do that. Of course, the teaching of the church. I want to talk about that a little bit today, just taking one small paragraph from the catechism that describes the times that we're living in um, and how to understand it. And if we, as we understand it, it'll help us cooperate with what the Lord is doing in us and through us, what he intends to do in us and through us in the time that we have, right? Before I do that, I just want to encourage you to hit the subscribe button. If you're just tuning in now to the YouTube channel, you're not a part of our channel yet, uh, we'd love to have you join us. Love to have you come to our website at RenewalMinistries.net. I've uh, got a lot of good stuff there, uh, TV shows, radio shows, YouTube videos, um, a lot of material that's free uh, that we've put together that hopefully would be a great encouragement for you. So here's the paragraph. I've actually read this a couple times over the years. It's one of my favorites from the catechism. There's a gazillion of them in there, but uh, here's one, paragraph 672. According to the Lord. So this is the Lord's perspective on the time that we're living in. So this is him helping us understand uh, not only the times we're living in, but how to, how to respond to them, okay? According to the Lord, the present time is the time of the Spirit and of witness, But it's also a time still marked by distress and the trial of evil, which does not spare the church and ushers in the struggles of the last days. It's a time of waiting and it's a time of watching. So let me just review. The Lord tells us, reminds us that the present time is first and foremost, the time of the spirit. Secondly, it's a time of witness. Third, it's a time marked by distress. Right? which includes the trial of evil, the battle against the kingdom of darkness and the struggles that are in this world. And the church doesn't get spared from that. It's part of the normal experience of human life and the normal Christian life as a Catholic and as a Christian. And it's also the time that's going to usher in the last days, and it's a time of waiting and watching. So I want to touch on each one of those just a little bit. And I'm again, I'm doing it because... Uh, I want to live with the Lord's perspective about the times that we're living in, and he desires that we flourish, you know, that we, in the midst of, no matter how difficult a trial, we're not surprised, no matter how much of a struggle we're facing, the devil's tactics against us, the troubling, you know, the troubles in the nations, the political dis, dis, uh, distress, uh, just the difficult times that lots of people right now are feeling, and lots of people are being deeply destabilized by it, and they're being psychologically and emotionally, spiritually uh, harmed by it in different ways. They're not they're not accessing the grace and the strength that the Lord has for them. I'm not I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying they're missing something that's very very important that the Lord wants us to be able to access in these in times like this. And what is really history between the two comings of Jesus. This is the present time. He came the first time as a lamb, laid down his life for the salvation of the world. He's coming again in glory to judge the living and the dead. So that's the moment, that's the big, broad moment we're living in, right, in history. But it's a time of the Spirit. It's a time when, in human history, Jesus Christ, who became one of us, you know, the Son of God, the Christ, the Anointed One, laid down his life, as I said, for the salvation of the world. He rose from the dead. He ascended to the right hand of God, the Father in heaven. And his great act of salvation, of transformation, culminated in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. So to live by the Spirit is the normal Christian life. How does that happen to us? When we're, we're baptized, we're united to this gift of the Spirit that gives us new life, makes us born again, allows us to become children of God. And that's really, you could say, the central thing that's happening in our lives until the Lord comes again. We do a lot of stuff. We have a lot of responsibilities. But the biggest thing that's going on in our life is the reality that, as Paul always tries to remind us, he said, Uh, test your faith. Do you not know that Jesus Christ dwells in you? Again, test your faith. Do you not know that you're a temple of the Holy Spirit? If we pay attention to that fact and we really believe it and we really receive it, when we study God's Word, the teaching of the church, we understand that the whole journey now, between now and when we're brought home to the Lord to complete fulfillment, is a steady growing in uh, the new life in the Spirit. 
And that means growing in the fruits of the Holy Spirit. That means helping us see the Father more fully. You know, the, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. And therefore, our hearts are able, under the anointing and leadership of the Holy Spirit, to be able to cry out to God as our Father, to say, Abba, to understand that we're loved by God, who is our Father. And that begins to take shape in us. And so we know we're in the hands of a loving Father. And that we don't have to worry, ultimately, about the difficulties and trials that he'll never leave us, he'll never abandon us. And it's the Holy Spirit who teaches us that. And But if we don't pay attention to it, and we don't listen to what he says, and we don't take the time daily to not only talk to the Holy Spirit throughout the day, but also times of quiet or times of reading God's Word and say, Holy Spirit, help me see the Father. Holy Spirit, help me see the Lord. You know, help me know the Lord. Help me know Jesus more fully as Lord. Help me understand how to follow him. Help me to internalize his promises in my life. And I want to live that journey. So it's the time of the Spirit. We know who we are. We're born again by water and the Spirit. He gave us power to become children of God. So this is the most fundamental reality that's happening in our lives. And we're walking that out every single day. He's here with us no matter what the circumstances. And his purposes are being fulfilled. Nothing can stop. God's purpose is being fulfilled in us, other than us just drifting away or abandoning or just shutting down. But if we're awake to this and we say, yeah, a lot of difficult stuff going on out there, even struggles in my home, but I know this, number one, I am now a temple of the living God, and he's working out his plan of salvation in my life every single day, so I want to be attentive to that, number one. And number two, the uh, not only it's a time of the Spirit, but it's a time of witness. Everyone who is baptized, is baptized in the Holy Spirit, is anointed with the anointing of Jesus. And as he said to the apostles uh, just before the ascension, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you know, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. You will be my witnesses, you know, in Judea and Samaria, and then throughout the whole world. So we know that we've been anointed by the Spirit of God empowered and strengthened to engage with the apostles and the saints and the brothers and sisters in history in the mission of communicating God's good plan of salvation, right? The good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we know for sure being witnesses and how we act and what we say and what we do, a real desire to bring people into the fullness of what we're living in. One of the reasons a lot of people don't engage in evangelization, don't see themselves as witnesses, because they're not living fully out of the awareness of the presence of the Holy Spirit in their lives and taking advantage of sacraments of prayer, of Scripture, and being attentive and living with the Lord and believing something absolutely profound is happening inside us each and every day as we live in communion with the Lord. And out of that realization, we understand how epic our life is and that we're participating in the Lord's transforming work in the world and extending the kingdom. So time of spirit and a time of witness. And then this is the the realism of the church. She understands the spiritual battle that we're in. So we're also living in a time that's marked by distress. How many of you feel like you're, you're experiencing a little bit of distress? You can feel the stress in the nations, can't you? Uh, the battle that's going on, the wars, the rumors of wars, the political disruptions everywhere, um, just a lot of lawlessness breaking out across the world. And it causes us human beings naturally to fear because things are shaking. Things don't feel secure. That's why we understand, again, we lean into the presence of the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We hold on to all the promises that the Lord has given to us, and we're living um, ready to, to live as witnesses in the midst of all that trial and all that difficulty. So the time of distress doesn't surprise us. And he also says, it's, as the catechism says, it's a trial of evil. The trial between the, you know, the battle between the kingdoms. Our battle is not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. It's going to happen all the way to the end. Now, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world, so we don't have to be afraid or overcome. We just need to engage the battle and be alert and aware of it and not be discouraged or knocked off track because we see distress and we see a battle with evil. And it's also important to see not only the trial of evil, but it also is going to be leading to, it's going to usher in the struggles of the last days, the rise of the Antichrist, the removal of the restrainer. That's going to happen. It's going to be a very difficult time. I just remember a few passages, you know, the words of Jesus himself that he said to us. He said, about the last days, you know, many will come saying, I'm the Christ and will deceive many. 
For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes, and you will be hated. You will be hated by all because of me. You'll be all nations before my name's sake, he's saying. And then many will hate one another. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. There will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, in the earth, in distress of nations, with perplexity in the sea and the waves roaring. So the Lord was very vivid, is very clear about the difficulty of the struggles just prior to the Lord's return, you know, the signs of the times. And so, you know, we're living in a kind of time. It's possible, friends, that we are living in the early stages of of uh, the coming and the return of the Lord. I don't know that. Nobody knows that for sure. But the kind of things we're seeing on a smaller scale that seem to be growing, those things are going to be present in the last time, and they're going to grow in intensification to, to a really high point. It's going to be really difficult. So the Lord said, this this is the kind of thing that's going to happen between you know my coming, these spiritual battles, the final struggle, the final battle, uh, the working of my Holy Spirit in you. And so he didn't say, you know, run and hide, right? He said, in this world, you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer for I will, I've overcome the world, right? Don't let your hearts be troubled. We've talked about that many times on our YouTube channel here. Because we are in the hands of the Lord. All of us are going to die anyway, by the way. Have you ever thought of that, friends? We're all going to die. We know that for sure. We don't know when. We don't want to die. And we all want to die peacefully, quietly, without pain and the rest. But that normally doesn't happen in the lives of people. And what we do know is we don't have to be afraid of death. And our death and the timing of it is in the hands of the Lord. Everything. And we don't have we don't have to be afraid because we see our destiny. And, and so part of that is uh, also here in this passage where it says, this is also a time of waiting and watching. It's not like a passive waiting, but it's being alert. It's being awake. It's being standing, sort of standing at attention and waiting for what? Waiting for the coming of the Lord, right? And watching, you know, because people Lewis said, he said, uh, I was going to found the passage here from Matthew 24, you know, watch therefore, for you do not know on what day our Lord is coming, but know this, that the householder, if the householder had known in what part of the, of the night the thief was coming, he would have watched and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready so that the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect him. So the waiting and the watching, it's the waiting of the coming of the Lord. It's watching for his coming, and the, and the Holy Spirit, the Spirit and the bride are saying, come, who's the bride? It's you and me. It's the church. And we know human history is headed toward not only our own personal death, but what's coming is the return of the Lord. And the church, with great anticipation, with alertness, with hunger, with a desire, we pray for the return of the Lord when he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. So we're waiting for that. We're watching. And we're also watching and waiting for the marriage feast of the Lamb. This great story of the Lord is going to, it started in a marriage, it's going to end in a marriage, right? We're going to be united. The Father is, is preparing a bride for his beloved Son. And that's why the whole journey, friends, of being purified, facing difficulties, facing struggles, going deeper, having to lean in our powerlessness and our weakness on the grace of the Holy Spirit and learning how to draw strength from the Lord as we walk in humility, as we walk in grace and we confess he's with us. And so we don't get distracted by too many conversations about the troubles that we're in. We don't get preoccupied with being anxious about it. We say, okay, I see it. I understand it. I understand what's going on. We have different roles, maybe, you know, in our families, in our neighborhoods, in our societies, in our jobs to be able to respond to some of the things that are going on. But fundamentally, the Lord wants us to walk in peace in that fruit of the Holy Spirit and to actually have a deep sense of joy. Where does that come from? The awareness of the depth of his love for me, uh, the working of the Holy Spirit in me, his promise that's so secure that he will never abandon me. And in the midst, nothing could stop, again, that growth that he wants to have in deeper intimacy, deeper union, deeper grace, transformation, holiness, all that journey. That's what it means to be awake, awake to what God's working is in me, what he's calling me to do, 
and responding to it every day, knowing that he's working it out no matter what the circumstances of life are, right? And to be able to know he's coming for us, right? Either individually on the day we die, or he's coming again. He's going to deal with all these enemies that he's already defeated on the cross for his final victory, friends. It's a beautiful little little paragraph. I'd encourage you to go to it at the Catechism, uh, paragraphs 672. Let me read it one more time. According to the Lord, the present time is the time of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. It's a time of witness, but also it's a time still marked by distress and the trial of evil, which does not spare the church, and it ushers in the struggles of the last days. It is a time of waiting and watching. Friends, let's stand alert. Let's help each other wait and watch, right? With a, with an, a heart that's animated, our eyes are set and fixed on the Lord, and we're trusting in Him, and we're giving Him permission to work in us in such a way that He can fulfill His purpose in us, and that purpose is to bring glory to His name and to bear fruit for the kingdom. That's what we have to keep our eyes on. Don't let anybody distract you from it and all the troubles of the time. God bless you, friends.